126 definitions for the phrase mm. More than ice. Mm. Snow. No, it's snow, right? Mm. <laughs> Actually, I was working on some music in Copenhagen, Denmark, and with Christopher, Gustafa, and he um, he loves to speak Yupik. You know, you're talking about language. He speaks. He grew up speaking Danish, and then of course learned English. And through the many years that we've known each other, he loves to learn Yupik. And he 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 only calls me by Gitak, my Yupik name, and he always tries to. He gets on me when I introduce myself as Philip. Like he loves it, the Yupik language, the Inuit language. And so I was, I was at his house, and we got up one morning, and he made a French roast, of um, a French press, of French roast from Kaladi. I brought some Kaladi Brothers coffee, a Alaskan coffee roaster, and um, and then I basically was uh, dead. I was barely awake and we had to get up and ride our bikes all the way across Copenhagen to the studio to work on the music. And he passed me this French uh, press and he said, Gil, Gil, go fuck yourself. <laughs> and I just processed what the heck he just said, what he meant to say and like how it came out without him even realizing it and I just died laughing and and he realized what he just said and what it sounded like and he just we were both just 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 I don't know we were crying and couldn't talk and it was hilarious and I told him in that moment I like because I had no, I knew that I wanted to make a thermos and and what it would be like and I told him I was like hey I'm stealing that I'm using it and I told him exactly, I was like, it's going to be a thermos, it's going to have a cup, toggle switch, and it's going to say that gufak, which means coffee. So he was speaking as much Yupik as he could. So he knew, he knows, of course, coffee means gufak. And he couldn't say it in a sentence, um, so he used English, you know, to complete the sentence. So he said, coffee, kind of like, coffee, here you go. Coffee, yourself. And so, um... That makes this wonderful phrase, Goofak Yourself. So you can get this at uh, goofakyourself.com. Mm. Mm. I grew up with many names, and a lot of them were um, basically variations of my Yupik name, which in long form is Gilirno. And so I'm named after my mom's uncle, so my grandmother's brother, Kilirno. And so the year that he passed was the year that I was born. And so in our culture, of course, you take the um, we take the namesakes of our dearly departed, and so um, newly departed. And so I took on his name. And so the short form of that is Kilak, K-I-L-L apostrophe A-Q, Kilak. And so that's so I grew up with. My f a lot of my family call me Gil, or, and then since it's K-I-L-L -L spelled, they would call me Kil, or Kilach, or um, uh, Giloni, and uh, a whole bunch of other variations of that killer. Mm -hmm. I think killer was the one that lasted the longest. Um, so my great uncle was named after he was um, disabled. He didn't. He had. He was deaf, and he, so he didn't have a formal language. So he would do a lot of sign language, mm -hmm. and he actually was a barber. And he had a in AC in the mall um, back in his day. He was a barber at the barber shop at AC. So a lot of people knew him, and he would communicate with them with facial expressions and smiling and his own form, his own form of sign language. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I think that's pretty cool. I'm proud to be named after Kilirno.
I think the, the best thing to do with language, for, especially for our native languages in Alaska, is just to use them. And I think that embody them. Kind of like what, you know, my good friend Christopher always says, use your Yupik language. Use your Yupik name. Let that identify who you are. Then you're, you, you, it becomes ingrained that you're embodying something that is, is a part of you and you're, and that is what, that's how you share yourself. You know, that's how you communicate who you are. So, um, people who, who t use that tool, just simple tool of like, you want to know who I am? And you use your, those people who use their native language, or their, their native names, as ways to identify who they, they are, I think that that's really brave in, in America. Because it's, it's really challenging, because there's so many people are, like even me, like I, I know you by Deborah, and so I, I don't, that's what I think when I see you, because mm -hmm. I have very great associations with that name and, and fond memories. So that's my association with you, but I, I really am proud that you are using your name, your name because it sends a signal to other people that one, it's okay to do that. And that is why I named my kids native names because I never thought of it as a possibility. I grew up my whole life knowing I had a native name, but then I would only use it in the context of my family that understand, understands the context of, of what, I, what I was saying and, and with, with only Yupik speakers. And I felt like I would, I was, I didn't even think it, if it, I didn't think of it as a actual reality that I can, that you can actually have a native name in America. And it wasn't until I went to Greenland, and everybody in Greenland, not everybody, but almost everybody, had their native names. Uh, Nuka, Nukaka, Aviaya, Tupangak. There's even a Kishla there. And so when I went there and I, to Greenland, and that was my first time traveling outside of the country, and I was like, you know, they're all Greenlandic and really curious about somebody from Alaska. And, and I told them, you know, my, my name is Kishak. And they're Kishak, Kishak. And they, because Kishak is a really, Kishak with a Q, Q-I-L-L-A-Q, is a common name there. And so everybody, so they, so it was really great because just that was a good example to see how language, how important that is, because as soon as they, they saw that my identity, my name, had something in common with their culture. It was something that, like, that created like this um, opportunity for them, the Greenlanders, say, "This is Kishak, you know, like he's from Alaska. His his name is Kishak, you know, isn't that cool?" <laughs> and so I got to sit back and benefit, like, "Yeah, yeah, I'm Kishak, but with the K, you know." <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so then after I came back and I and I was had my first child and thinking you know what we we should we can call you know we were thinking of native names but I was thinking them as like on the side and then well what are we gonna really call them <laughs> and because that's what that's what everybody says back home what's your real name when you when you tell them your Yupik name. And they'll say, oh yeah, but what's your real name? Then you mean their English name. And so anyways, I think that that's a really strong way. Um, Bamiwa, when we chose that name as a group for, to represent our group, um, it was really one of those things that we knew that not everyone was going to know how to say it. There's a learning curve. And that's why we were excited to use it. And that's, that's where we found the power in it. We're like, you know what? That's a good idea. We're sending a signal. We're sending a message to people. Yeah, this is our name. Learn how to say it. You know, and, and it'll just make you a better person. You know, we'll all be better if we understand a new word 
you know, another, another way to communicate. So, language is really, really difficult for me as a Yupik person, and I wasn't able, I never grew up speaking fluent and trying to learn and try to communicate in Yupik, it's just really challenging. Hey! All right, you guys are here. You guys ready to make a movie? Sure. One last question, or are you done? You got, you got good. I think I'm. I think I'm good for now. Yeah, I, I just, blah, 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 blah. I, I ramble too much. Yeah. Come on in. Where's everyone else? Bucha. Yeah, where? Bucha. Oh, Bucha. Lauren, don't look in the camera. Oh. Now look at the camera. Oh, okay. Yeah, look at the camera. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, my name is uh, Lauren Anderson. My native name is Lisang Alchemak. And uh, I was born in Kodiak. And I am Supak. Supak Runga. <laughs> no, I, absolutely. The dance, dance music, I think, is when it started. Because uh, I've told you this story before. But um, then I come to the Heritage Center and I see a Yupik dance group. I'm like, oh, it's beautiful. I love it. And I see another Yupik. Wow, oh, wonderful. Chupik. Oh, great. Nupiak. St. Lawrence Island, Southeast, Unanga. I'm like, where's our dance group? How come we don't have one? How come there's no Sukbiak or Lutic dance groups? And uh, yeah, that's what I think I clicked. And I said, we need one in here in Anchorage. And uh, what really bummed me out too is that a lot of times they do dancing in school, in the villages, but as soon as they graduate, none of them continue with it. And uh, I think again it comes from that point of like you don't make somebody do something you know if they want to dance it's in their heart they'll, they'll come and they'll do it I think a lot of times they make the kids do it and I don't because you need to learn this because no one's doing it and you have to do it and then you get to a point where you don't want to do it so in Anchorage uh, changed it you know this is when practice is if you show up I, it's wonderful if you don't then I understand you're busy I'm not going to judge you for not dancing. Um, but if you do show up, then I expect that you're going to want to participate. Because why else would you show up? And so, the, yeah, dancing and singing, I think, like when I tried to compose a song, and I remember the first song I composed was like, it took me like a year. That was the Jayaka. But then since then, uh, it's been real easy. It's like, I did that song, and then as I learn more of the language, it's like, wow, now it's, it just flows. I'm like, oh, I made a song, I'm like, well, because it's not that thing. I just ha It just came to me, and it, it made a song like half an hour, because mm -hmm. it was just like, boom. The idea came to my head, I'm like, and then I had that new website to help us, help me with the words and stuff, so. But I think what happens is, again, dealing with language and culture, is that we stuff this stuff away we don't we don't talk about it and and I understand why I mean our if you our grandparents were beaten for speaking our language or um, they thought it was in our best interest that we learn English and, and it was always for the better I mean parents don't do things for to hurt their kids I mean I mean I'm granted today there is child abuse and neglect and stuff like that but generally speaking a, a parent is there to protect their children and and this is one way to protect us by not sharing these types of things. But I think they're realizing now that uh, um, I have to share this because our elders are passing away. And um, just like on the news the other day, last night, you know, 15 speakers, uh, you know, in, in my my area that are fluent, and uh, you know, if they don't teach us, and we're not going to have it for the next generation. So I'm glad that all this. I'm, I'm sad that we had to wait to the last minute, but at the same time, we still have a last minute. So. <laughs> Let's do it all right now, and we'll, we'll, we'll make it. But again, like I said earlier, too, it, um, there's a much larger appreciation of it, too, I think. So. I, I told a story over at Baggage just now, and I told a story of the, uh, it's a Panart story, where, um, to make a long story short, they paint three symbols on a kayak, a star, a hand, and a crab claw. Crab claw is a momsua, the sea spirit, so he's asking the sea mistress to help him in his battle against the sea monster. He painted a star on the kayak, and the star represents uh, the knowledge and wisdom of our ancestors, so that if you listen to the stories of your ancestors, if you learn the lessons, there's this power that's 
unequaled, that you have all this knowledge, not just well, what you've learned, but thousands or hundreds of years of what your ancestors know, and you just have to listen. And then um, what I think is really cool, they painted a, a hand on the kayak, and the hand represents that the Creator gave us the ability to change things, and that if something's wrong or something of injustice, we don't have to sit and take it. That the Creator gave us the power to change that, and see that's those are stories that I learned on Kodiak, and that that's why you hear about all these things happening. You know what? I'm upset that there's an, our native language isn't taught in schools. Well, guess what? How are we going to get that taught? Well, we have to get somebody on the school board. Okay, then let's do that, and then we'll get all the people involved. And by golly, if we need to get somebody elected on the school board, and guess what they did? Got Kodiak in the school district. Aleutic language is taught as a foreign language. <laughs> but again, you know, this little baby steps at a time, so. <laughs> but, but um, yeah, the hand, I mean, like, yeah, you, you can do things, you mm -hmm. can. So I think that also, like, when I was in school, I mean, high school, um, later on I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to tell kids I'm native, and, and then uh, I'm going to run for class president, and I'm going to run for... I did all that. I did. I was a class vice president. And, uh, I played on the tennis varsity team, and you know, I played all kinds of sports. And um, yeah, after a while, it became kind of celebrity status. You know. <laughs> so uh, I need to learn how to use it. <laughs> but it's uh, it's empowering. So I think once I embrace being native and understanding the importance of language and culture, and uh, I know I mean still in the kids at a younger age. Um, not necessarily saying you have to learn this, but look how important this is. And I think the kids know, and they just, they just pick it up and run with it. So uh, we're fortunate in that sense. You know, especially, well, you've met a lot of the kids, too. Who are, um, yeah, they, they want to learn. They want, they want more information. They don't want anything held back. And uh, that makes me feel like, wow, you know. Um, there's plenty of hope for the future. I know that a lot of times people talk about this is the end of a language and it's dying, but uh, uh, I don't know. I, I have a. I think it's great. I think the kids are really working hard, and um, we just have to make sure there's all those opportunities for them to learn. And uh, you know, I don't know. They asked me to be on an advisory council. I'm like, to advise about what? I don't know anything. <laughs> but it's it's more than just knowing the language. It's uh, by encouraging them to learn the language and have them be with the elders. And, um, you know, I wish I could learn. I still can. So I'll show the kids too. I'm like, I'll sit in the class with you. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to learn right along with you so we can talk to each other someday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? It's funny too, thinking back, um, all the words I thought that were Russian were native language. So, um, so my, par my grandmother did speak it, it in the house. And uh, I think that's why it's, um, I can get the words, you know, it, it's, I can, it's, it's in there, I just gotta get this, this brain working. If I hadn't gone to the uh, boarding school, I wouldn't have picked it up. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because when I was born at Nome, we left, when I was five, I was speaking English. We arrived at St. Michael to my grandmother's home, my mother's mother's home, and everyone was speaking Yupik or Inupiaq because it's right at the borderline. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I heard both languages from five to ten years old. When I arrived at the mission school at ten, immersed in Yupik. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. for nine years. So, thank you. A spell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So, uh, do we have to use the hoon and 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 the hoon
Ina Abba, Desnaka, Lorraine, yes, Johnny, Coney, Elon, Ita Abba, Desnaka, George, yes, Helen, Hoffman, Elon, Anchors Lido, Baha, Nakan, Nakedin, Nadigi, and that means the long, narrow thing that you write with. Mm. AKA pencil. Pen has a different name. And this is. This means Koyakon. Tlayega Hutana. And then the specific Koyakon, I'm Nohi Hutana. And that's middle of the river, I mean, middle of the Yukon, Ruby area. So this is a shot of the river at Ruby. Our village is right here. This is from the bluff. And then Bilagana is American. White American, so I'm white American in Quaycon. It was when I was 21. It's when I really put effort into learning our language. It's when I had been away at school, at college, for two years. And I decided instead of learning Russian, because it's a trade language and we get a lot of our Loan words from them, I decided to try and learn some Quaycon. So I took off two quarters from school and worked one quarter and then spent a quarter with my grandma in her in Galena. And I was taking an audio Quaycon class with Susan Paskban through the Yukon Kayakuk School District and practicing with my grandma on the side my Sitsu. Lillian, right here. It's my Sitsu Lillian. We're having her, she passed away two years ago. We're having her potlatch this summer. The end of August, first weekend in August. In so Galena? In, it's going to be, she's buried in Ruby. Oh, I see. I'm pretty sure it'll be in Ruby. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, she's really was the one who encouraged me that it was something I needed to go for. Along with my college roommate, who is Navajo, he would rattle off to his grandma on the phone in, in, in Diné, and I thought that was so cool. And then he was like, Dewey, what about you? Do something. <laughs> so I was like, okay. And then my cousin Freddie, too. He's a couple years older than me, and he took a, a Koi Khan class, and a Gwich'in class. And he's also been a big encouragement. Well, I'm pretty critical by nature, so... Not knowing some of the more nuanced ways of speaking can be frustrating. But overall, and of course the whole daunting, you know, message that we hear over and over, our languages are dying, ah, you know, the panic, that's really daunting. But instead of focusing on that, I just try and focus on little things I can do each day. Like even just flipping through my language dictionary over lunch, or practicing little things with my nephews, like, come here, on it, get out of here, ha, sit down, lido, just little things like that, and that helps me feel good and feel like there's hope in the way that we carry forward our traditions with speaking our language. And I gotta find a woman who wants to learn and speak Quaik on at home. It's my next challenge. In this Hot day you 
de bochen o oje dat ik geef o de snete hinne so ze heo hinne so ze heo he isu ze anna so ze heo he hot ik er kunne to o no hit at den ani o ze ho je kunne no te ni ko ge tele rösti hinne so ze heo hinne so ze heo he isu ze anna so ze heo he hot ik er kunne to o no hit at den ani o ze ho je kunne no te ni ko Ritelerti Hinne so sehe ich auch hier, hier 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 so sehe 